All right, folks. Welcome back. It's um, Sunday, the thirtieth of June, two thousand and nineteen. I'm on the Daily Record. Um, this is a story by Martin Halley and Nicholas Small. I'm just going to call her wee Nicola. So this is a this is a sad story as it relates to this particular man's family. His name's Tommy Goodwin. Um, the headline is Mad Cow Disease. The second wave is expected to hit Britain as experts warn many more could die. So you wonder to yourself, what's that all about? But having read this story, it, it reminds me of a theory I've had for quite a long time. And after reading this story, I started using Google. Although Google itself now seems to be becoming... Um, I don't know how we would put it, uh, biased with regard to certain things, but I thought I would get this out there before. I mean, this video may ultimately be taken down because of what I'm going to reveal here or the theories that I'm going to espouse to you or the, the, the route I'm going to take with it. But first of all, it's going to be a wee while this, so, you know, buckle up. So you all remember mad cow disease. This was a disease that suddenly appeared in cattle. You know, the cattle were staggering about the place, etc, etc. And they, they were like, oh, what's going on? And they, they, they slaughtered the cattle that seemed to be affected. Um, and done a bit of research into it. And found out that the cattle's brains were in some way infected with some um, pathology. And the pathology was, uh, there was a sort of sponge-like um factor in their brain, there was holes between certain areas, you know, your brains, all brains work in a, in a kind of electrical kind of charge thing where you've got a synapses that fire off and, and hit different parts of the brain. But if there's a hole develops between one side of the brain and the other side of the brain, or there's a, a pathology develops there, the synapses don't fire the nor normal way and brain function changes. Also, they noticed that the brains in the cows were shrinking as compared to a healthy brain, cattle brain. And so that was bad enough. Um, but what I actually think then happened was the scientists put it together and realised what I'm about to tell you. And not long after, we had, coincidentally, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, um, apparent foot and mouth disease outbreak in Britain. And this foot and mouth outbreak in Britain, you see, when you get foot and mouth in cattle, you kill everything. And they killed everything. And what I believe that was, was an attempt by the authorities not to alert people to what they had found the cause. I'm going to reveal what I think the cause was. Um, they wanted to kill the herd of cattle in the UK so that they could start again. And you wonder to yourself, well, why is that? But in order to try and understand uh, the history, you need to go back in time. And it, and, you, and it goes back in time to before the Second World War. That's how far back this story goes. Now, just as a reminder, before the Second World War, the people here, the diet here, was not a really heavily meat-based diet because cattle farming and etc etc was not at the same sort of level as it is or it became after the Second World War. And why why is that? Well, like everything else, after the Second World War, everybody became Americanized, didn't we? Supermarkets started appearing. Techniques that we didn't know anything about were imported from America and suddenly we were, you know, production lines for this and Different types of foods were coming in, etc, etc. Now, unfortunately though, some practices that the Americans had been using for quite some time um, came in too. And in America, they they have gigantic cattle ranches, a lot more people than us. So they, they have sort of got their cattle ranching and their cattle production and their meat production, just like a production line. And they were all about bigger cattle, more meat for your money, etc, etc. So, the UK, along with the US, um, started 
trying to use as much of the cattle as the, the, the dead cattle that they had butchered for, for meat as possible, recycled it back into food stuff to feed the cattle because they were it's all about money isn't it and um, if we can use the dead cattle to feed the cattle then it's it's more efficient isn't it you see so what they technically did was they used what was left of the cattle and um, rendered it all together and made it into pellets mixed with some other bits and pieces and fed it as food stuff to cattle in actual fact what they had done they had turned a herbivore, which is a cow, into a, ca a, 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 a carnivore, which is a meat-eating animal. Cows don't eat meat. Cows eat grass. But in fact, they didn't realise that this was going to have repercussions. In fact, the repercussions took generations and generations and generations to appear right through the whole breed of cattle to change. It's not an overnight thing to change the pathology of the cattle's brains and it appeared when it appeared as mad cow disease. Now, as I say, after the Second World War, when all these techniques became available here, families, mothers, started giving their children meat. It was a pride, it was, it was, it was, they felt great to be able to give their children meat because they couldn't afford meat. It was a, a source of pride to be able to do that and you can understand it because it became more available you go to a supermarket and it was frozen you just take it and take it home the fridges were up here and you could keep it in your house do you see how it all all the, the serendipity of it how it, the coincidences all came together and so everybody started eating meat more meat than they would normally eat and then all of a sudden all we're in the future uh, mad cow disease and as a result of that some people actually actually got the actual mad cow disease and it's called CJD and CJD is in humans is the, nearly the exact same as it is in the cows i.e. spongy form um, uh, no, the brain pathology breaks up etc etc I was trying to explain and holes appear in the pathology of the brain so that's bad enough isn't it and they tried to rectify it by, I believe, the, the um, foot and mouth epidemic, just to try and hoodwink everybody, to try and clear it, right? They couldn't tell you what I'm about to tell you. Now, what else has been happening to us? And it's happening more and more. You know, not a day goes by without you hear somebody getting it or you hear a, some member of your family got it. So what I'm talking about is dementia and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. There's been massive outbreaks of dementia, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's in the UK. Now, don't just, that, don't just believe me. Think about it. Do you know somebody who, whose friend or uncle or granny has got Alzheimer's or dementia? How many people are in the homes with dementia? When I was a young boy... All the grannies never had dementia and they lived to the same age. You see, what they tell you when they talk about dementia is what they're told to tell you. And that is, it's because we're living longer. That's what happens. The brain deteriorates. I'm afraid that's just an absolute load of shite. Because, folks, there's a place called Japan. I don't know if you've heard of it. The people in Japan, they live the longest in general than anybody else, any other country. But their diet consists mainly of rice and fish. What is our diet? Or what has our diet consisted mainly of since the end of the Second World War? Lots of meat. So we have been eating contaminated meat for generations and it's been coming through our, just like the cows, right? It's come through the generations of cattle, it's come through our generations and it's appearing as we get older because mad cow disease appeared in cattle when the cattle were a certain age. It generally didn't appear in cattle that were going to be butchered for meat. It appeared in dairy cattle. C dairy cattle that had been long, you know, they had long lives because they were given milk for their whole life. Now, don't just believe me. You know, I'm going to show you um, some pictures now 
Now, the first picture is going to be about a comparison of two brains. You're going to see a brain that's normal, and then a brain on the right that has um, Alzheimer's. And the thing you'll notice about Alzheimer's is that the brain is a lot smaller, and there's big spaces in it and stuff like that, where between the two hemispheres of the brain. So let's have a wee look at that. And you can see what I'm saying, the size is completely different. It doesn't look as a, a, a hazard, you know, a hazard to use the word juicy, but I'm going to also let you hear a woman talking about it. Um, I'm better playing her video and so she can see what she's got to say about it. And she explains it a lot better than me. But this is the Alzheimer brain in, in the wee video. Right, let's have a wee look. We're going to take a look at what an actual brain with Alzheimer's looks like. This is possible because of a gift of some very special people who donated the brains of people they loved after they died. Why don't you take a look at this and tell me the difference between those two brains. The Alzheimer's brain is considerably smaller. One smaller. What else? Particularly look this versus that. What do you notice? The gap. The gap is bigger. What do you notice about how big or how juicy the actual parts of the brain are? A little less juicy. Yeah. These people were the same age, same size, same sex. The only difference between these two people was one had Alzheimer's and one didn't. Okay. It literally shrinks. It will go down to one third its original size. Okay, so that's that. Now, what I want you to do is take a look at a CJD brain. Now, this is the, the mad cow disease brain. Do you see what it says? Brain shrinkage occurs. Brain shrinkage and deterioration occurs rapidly. And there's the um, spongy form pathology that you get in Alzheimer's. You see, folks, it's the same thing. Only a variation. Now, in doing my research into this, and the research that other people know about but they don't talk about, I found this article. And it says here, is your, is your diet giving you Alzheimer's disease? It says, for the past 20 years, scientists have wondered whether Alzheimer's disease may be a neuroendocrine disorder like diabetes. In 2005, Dr. Susanna De La Monte had a breakthrough. So she actually thinks it's to do with insulin or a depletion of insulin. And that may be the case, but that isn't what caused, in my opinion, Alzheimer's or the dementia um, type diseases. You see, these diseases are what's called prion diseases. That's the connection between mad cow disease and Alzheimer's. It's nothing to do with um, diabetes, but it, it's no coincidence, by the way, that they've got a big fat hamburger there. But that hamburger may not now have uh, any remnants of mad cow disease in it because the food that they feed the cattle has been changed. But on, keeping on the subject, I did some more research on it. And eventually, it took a while. It took quite a lot of Google searches. You know, because Google itself, I think, um, hide certain things. But it took a wee while, and I came across um, this one. A study claims Alzheimer's disease is a double prion disorder. Mad cow disease, mad deer disease, Alzheimer's disease. So, mad cow disease is a double prion disorder. Mad deer disease is a double prion disorder. Um, and there's a connection between, it says here, prions are abnormal infectious forms of proteins that collect in brain tissue, right? Causing cells to die. Sponge-like holes are left in the brain are a hallmark um, of transmissible spongy form encyclopedianias or whatever that is, such as bovine spongy form and syphilis right? <laughs> BSE, uh, also known as mad cow disease in cows, and chronic wasting disease in deer, 
and Crutchall, Jacob disease and humans, they're all a version of BSE, right? Now, what it also says down here is, for a number of years now, researchers have theorised and found evidence suggesting Alzheimer's disease may in fact be a type of prion-based disease, just like mad cow's disease. Now, I'm going to put the link to this, I'm not going to try and read it to you, right? I know I know the attention span of people on YouTube is is limited, right? I know you's, you's a, you're used to excitement for me, you know that. <laughs> And this can maybe look on as be a bit boring, but this is the truth, folks, right? In my opinion, this is where it came from. It says here, between 1958 and 1985, remember I said about the Second World War, and after the Second World War, a number of individuals with short stature received shots of human growth hormone extracted from the pituitary glands of cadavers. Some of these samples were contaminated with prions that caused certain patients to develop CJD, a rare fatal brain disorder. Treatment ceased once these reports came to light, right? So they ceased those treatments because it brought about CJD. But what they did they realise was that, as far as I'm concerned, is that feeding cattle, uh, the remnants of cattle, also produced CJD in the cattle which then was transmitted to the human population that eat the cattle. Um, treatment ceased once these reports came to light, but by the time an estimated 30, but by that time an estimated 30,000 people had received the injections. As of 2012, researchers had identified 450 cases of CJD worldwide that are the result of these growth hormone injections. All right. Previous animal research has also found that when tiny amounts of blah blah blah, which are hallmarks, but the hallmarks of Alzheimer's are injected into mice or monkeys, they act as self-propagating seeds. As many as half of Alzheimer's patients have prion-like proteins, mounting research reveals a compelling link between the protein known as TTP43 um, and neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and Lewy, whatever. Um, behaves like the prions response for brain disorders and mad cow disease. So, this is research up to 2014 and the Daily Record, the Sun, the Mirror, the BBC, nobody is telling you about this because they can't tell you about it. They cannot accept responsibility for this. So, the farmer's done it. You know the guys that are running about with Range Rovers? You know, that get grants for the EU or grants for them and people talk about the farmers for that. They killed and gave us a disease because of their greed. Right? They managed to get rid of it by creating a foot and mouth epidemic, which everybody swallowed, except me. Glasgow News is uh, a lot harder to fool. <laughs> anyway, folks, listen. A bit depressing, but sometimes the truth can uh, the truth can be a bit depressing. So um, I'm going to leave, leave you with that. Um, if you like the content, give us a like, share, and uh, subscribe. Peace out.